Mathematical equations can be quite intimidating if you don't know how to read them, but they don't need to be. It's possible to learn how to make sense of them even if you don't know much algebra. So if, when you see an equation, it looks like a strange alien language, this video is for you. The first rule is you need to find out where these things called variables are. A mathematical equation describes a relationship between things. The most common form is something equals something else. These letters are the variables and are stand-ins for numbers. You can put any number into them, but the equation fixes what the other numbers can be. For example, y equals x means that the numbers in y and x have to be the same. But in y equals 2x, the number in y has to be double whatever the number in x is. The best way to visualise this is with a graph. When you do this, each variable in your equation gets an axis. And the line on your graph shows the allowed pairs of values for your equation. The other thing you get in equations are constants. And you have to keep an eye out for constants because they look like variables. They're written with a letter, but actually they're just a single number. A famous one is pi, but in science you get many others. So how do you know which letters or symbols are constants or variables? Well, you don't. You have to rely on the person writing the equation to tell you what all of the bits mean. Practically, when you use equations in science, you have the numbers to put in all of the variables apart from one, and that's the one you're trying to work out. So you plug in all the numbers and find out what the last variable should be. Let's look at an example of an equation and how I'd go about reading it. This is Newton's law of universal gravitation, which looks at the force of gravity between two masses. First thing you do is work out what all of the letters mean. F is the gravitational force that you're working out. M1 and M2 are the masses of the two bodies. G is the gravitational constant. And R is the distance between the masses. Now you work out which letters are variables and which ones are constants. This formula has just got one constant, G, which is a tiny little number. Now you basically know how to use this formula. If you have the masses of any two objects and the distance between them, you can plug in the numbers and calculate the force of gravity between them. So the force of gravity between an apple and an orange is about the weight of a grain of pollen. Very, very small. When you plug numbers in and solve the equation, you have to know what order to do things in. And this is the next step that you need to work out after you've identified the variables and constants. Knowing what order you do the mathematical operations in an equation helps you get your head around them. And there's some rules about how it's done. Any variables that are just next to each other are multiplied with each other, and you do these first. At the same time, you do any divisions, but only if it's a single number divided by another number. And then you do the additions and subtractions. If you've got a division but there's an addition or subtraction at the top or bottom, you need to make sure these are done first before you can do the division. And finally, anything in brackets goes before anything outside of the brackets. There are more rules, but this covers you in most situations. When you come across an equation in a book or video, you're probably not going to start putting actual numbers into it, but running through what you would do if you had the numbers is a really useful way to get your head around the equation. In these examples, I've mostly used normal letters, but many equations also use Greek letters. I think this is why equations look so weird to people, because they're unfamiliar with all these strange symbols. But you should think of them just the same as normal letters. They can be used to represent constants or variables, so they're just the same. You also get other notations like subscripts, and these are all basically used as labels to identify different constants or variables. Other notation has specific mathematical meanings, and I can't cover everything in this video, but if you're ever confused about what something means, I encourage you to look it up, as they normally end up being simpler than you think. But also I've made a handy cheat sheet, which I've put in the description below, so you can also check that out. Now here are some of the other more common weird things that you'll see. You're all familiar with multiplication, division, adding and subtracting. These are all things called mathematical operations, but they're not the only ones. And here are some of the more common ones that you'll see. This big Greek epsilon is a sum operation. And what it means is that you take this thing and you repeatedly add it to itself, but put in different numbers each time. This is the number that you start at, and this is the number that you end at. It also means that this variable has to be an integer variable, which means that it can only take on whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, no numbers in between. So whenever you see a sum, just imagine this thing as a whole series of things being added together, but each having a different value. Similar to a sum is an integral, which really needs a graph to explain it. It's basically a way of finding the area underneath a line that's defined here. 
Like a sum, it's got a beginning and an end, although these can go from minus infinity to infinity, so you might see that written sometimes too. And finally, related to integration is differentiation, which looks like this, and it's an operation that looks at how the steepness of a line changes, called the gradient of a line. So when you have things like dy by dx, they're looking at the gradients of lines. That's just a quick look at integration and differentiation. These make up calculus, but that needs a whole video in itself to explain properly. I put them here just so you don't freak out when you see them. So those are the basics of how to read mathematical equations. Step one, find the variables and constants and what each one represents. Step two, work out what all the weird mathematical operations are. And step three, work out what order you'd solve the equation in if you put in the numbers. If you want more info, check out this cheat sheet I've put together with all of the different Greek letters and most of the more common mathematical operations. Check it out in the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, another fantastic resource is the sponsor of this video, Brilliant.org. There's no better way to learn than by solving puzzles yourself, and at Brilliant you learn through active problem solving. They have fantastic introductions to mathematics like patterns and variables shown here, and what I love about them is that they're visual, and so help you build up an intuition for mathematics, and you're not just memorising formulas or learning sums. It's a lot of fun, and I really recommend you giving it a try. Just go to brilliant.org slash DOS, or click on the link in the description below. And if you like my stuff, consider subscribing, and thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon. Your contributions really help me make this channel viable. See you in a month for a new video.